So far, we have covered two of the grant types that we're going to be seeing. And one of those was the refresh token grant, which you need an, a refresh token to start with. So you need another grant to generate the initial refresh token. So uh, if you start from scratch, we have only seen one useful uh, grant type, which is the password grant. Um, and uh, the one that we're going to see next is the client credentials grant. Uh, so if you head to this very handy page of the, of the library, um, you can see that um, it is recommended to use the client credentials grant if you are dealing with machine-to-machine -machine authentication. So if two machines are talking, uh, to each other uh, and you need to authorize uh, maybe a Java cron job from uh, another system that needs to do some stuff in Drupal uh, and it needs to be authenticated uh, that's um, that's a good match for the client credentials grant and um, that is uh, the case of this uh, of this example so um, I went ahead and I created a bunch of stuff uh, and I'm gonna walk you through it so uh, one thing that is worth noting is that uh, we have a machine talking to another machine, which means that uh, this doesn't really match the, the Drupal user and password um, scheme. So because uh, there is no real user, there is no real person, it's a, it's a machine um, and that's fine. And we could be uh, creating a virtual user that just creates and does the stuff and uh, it gets the permissions that that needs to to get but many parts of the system rely on the assumption that there is a user id that is valid and that you can record an entity reference to it to store things like the author of the node that you just created or um, logging the current user and that is always based on the assumption that there is a valid user ID that is stored in the database or in the whatever storage that you have said, um, a SQL, Mongo, uh, whatever. So that's why it is recommended to, you to create a user that represents that machine. In this case, our username will represent the Java cron job and use that as the, as the default. And I'm gonna show you how, how to set that up uh, for the client credentials grant. So as you can imagine, I created a new client. Uh, it's called Java Cron Job. And if I go and edit it, uh, you can see that there is no difference, um, but the fact that I set this parameter here, uh, I created a user called Java Cron Job and I gave it the uh, I gave it the role that I that I needed to, and uh, I just pasted the the name here with the autocomplete. I get the um, the reference to it, and uh, as a secret, I used one, two, three, four, five, six six characters, uh, and then I. Uh, I created, uh, as we talked about before, a scope for this application, and this scope will contain all of the all of the permissions that this cron job needs to do. Maybe it needs to create nodes. Maybe it needs to delete nodes. Nodes, and um, that's uh, that's what it goes inside of this role. Uh, that it will get again. It will get granted to the token automatically by the fact that you are using the Java cron job client. So. Um, we go back and this is the, the idea. Uh, something else that I wanted to show you is that you uh, don't have to look at my videos to know which parameters you need to be putting in every grant type because you can go here and uh, go to the uh, client credentials grant and see that uh, you need to be posting grant type, client credentials, the client ID, the secret and the scopes. Um, which you are already familiar with. Um, so uh, just go to, to this documentation page because uh, it's pretty good uh, and uh, it's very simple. So I'm gonna just uh, start by, uh, instead of getting one of my examples from here, I'm gonna start from scratch. So I'm doing a post and setting a body and uh, parameters are Grant type, 
gonna put client credentials to client ID. We know how to get that because uh, it's the user ID that we have here. Uh, next is the client secret. The client secret is one, two, three, four, five, six. And as for the scopes, we're gonna leave it empty and we should expect the token type bearer, the expiration date, and an access token, and we should not see a refresh token. Uh, and that's by, by design. So if you need to refresh your token, you need to send this again. Uh, and see that uh, this is not so critical because you're only sending the uh, client ID and secret of the client um, itself. So uh, no username and password are linked. So if I click send, Ah, you see that there is an access token and if we go to our debug route here and I'm gonna close this up so it doesn't clutter my screen if I go here and debug this uh, it should give us the uh, Java current job user ID in here which uh, let's check is 1714 uh, and yep it came back while I was checking that and it's 1714 and it's um, authenticated user and uh, everything seems to be to be working with the client credentials grant um, so uh, that's another way to uh, to get uh, authentication on this 1714 user um, but bear in mind that this grant can only authorize one user and, uh, and that's the, the beauty of, of this because uh, for each for each situation you get to use a different grant um, so this wraps up the the basic uh, the basic grants the basic three grants that the that this module ships with and uh, the other two grants the implicit grant and the authorization code grant are going to live in a separate contrib and uh, I think I showed you this before uh, but let me show you again if you go to here you will see that uh, this is separated in two repos um, these are the two grants they belong to the third parties uh, because they are for third party authorizations and uh, these are separated so we can have uh, part of these these three grants go into core and these two still live in in contrib and uh, have that used if you have the need that's it